One second while I get the other camera going. Greetings, unsettled souls! Welcome to the Correct Views. It's Sam I. B. DeGangie here doing political commentary for the media speaks. You might have read my work at Teddy Stick or the Conservative Daily Post. Maybe Blasting News. Uh, that's me, guys. Uh, massive Fukushima update time. Uh, one of the most important shows that we do. And uh, let's face it, one of the most important shows that anyone can do. I'm going to let people trickle in live and I'll remind you that this is listener supported. Um, go through my videos. I don't even drop many F-bombs on air. Out of the 700 and some videos that I have up, I think I may have sworn in any significant manner maybe in 20 of them. Do you know that YouTube has uh, moved to not allow those of us who are not raging socialists to have monetization. We're not allowed to monetize just about anything. <clears throat> so basically when you're seeing this, if it's a benefit to you, the only way that uh, you could be a benefit to me in, thanks to what YouTube has done is to directly donate. So flat out friends, I'm asking you to do that. Uh, you can donate at the correct views of hotmail.com. Go through PayPal. You, anything that you donate to me, I put towards a better show. And uh, you'll be able to see, uh, as this begins, that I have quite a show full of information for everyone. So please support it. That would be extremely helpful. Let me fix this a bit. There we go. And we're going to get right into the news. I'm going to go to screen share. Fact cam behind me. You guys can all see what I'm reading. You guys on low def here will see it on the screen. Nuclear worker says an eminent flooding is coming uh, near the nuke plant, which is, of course, Fukushima in Japan, from Hurricane Harvey. Potentially catastrophic. Running out of food, working tirelessly to manage problems. Area turned upside down. Nearby river forecast to rise 50 feet and overlap levees. Now, I guess I should have worded that better. What I meant to say was um, we're starting our Fukushima news by looking at what it is that's going on in Texas right now, because this can't be this can't be overstated. People like to say that the tidal wave caused the disaster that we saw in Fukushima, but that's that's not true. Um, the earthquake triggered the immediate meltdown. Well, they keep saying, "Well, we don't have floods and things like." All right. Now we've got floods, and it might as well be a tidal wave. We've got nuclear power plants all over that area. We have built bombs posing as power plants. Even though they lose money, I mean, they lose massive amounts of money. And when storms come in or any kind of a disaster at all, we welcome it. You gr greenies, I have a lot of greenies. Green Party people that watch this show. Let me ask you something. What the hell is wrong with you? You're supposed to care so much about the environment. But you can't see that coal doesn't do nearly the damage that nuke does? You can't see that? You keep saying that there's global warming. Well, we know that man is not causing global warming. But even if he was, if this problem is as real as you say it is and storms are supposed to get so much worse... Why are you building bonds up and down the coastline and calling it green, calling it helpful to the environment? I don't see where that's helpful to the environment any. Call me nuts. Also, we know that uh, uh, the university, a uh, scientist, University of Washington professor Mass, is his name, M-A-S-S, -S, has proven that Hurricane Harvey was not caused by anything to do with global warming. The temperatures were no higher in the area. So that would mean that even if a man is not warming the planet, these storms are going to cycle through no matter what. And they're going to be what they are. Sometimes they are going to be horrendous and sometimes they are not. But if we're building bombs for them to hit so that we can send all this garbage like a plume into the freaking air, then we're practically begging for it, aren't we? Toronto Star, I uh, quote here, Canadian engineer... Uh, Rehan uh, Con Conker said his 
family uh, safely left their home in southern Texas, but he was forced to return to the Bay City area as part of a support team at a nuclear power plant. For three days, Conker, who is from Toronto, has been working tirelessly to manage one thing after another, driving through water-soaked streets to bring supplies to engineers at the plant who are running out of food. Conker said houses in his neighborhood have been turned upside down and rising waters in the nearby river threatens to send a potentially catastrophic flood into areas. Um, every single creek in the neighborhood is full. There is an imminent flood coming to Bay City. All right, look. We quickly here are running out of options other than shutting these things down. You want more? You want more of the Weather Channel. Colorado River may overstop levees at several feet in Bay City. My wife and I, we, we love going to Cedar Point. We love amusement parks and that kind of thing. And uh, in, in near, near Cedar Point is an amusement park. Uh, near, duh. near the amusement park is a nuclear power station, the Perry Nuclear Power Plant. like to think about it very much, it might come true, but I told my wife, imagine if Pripyat, there was an amusement park in Pripyat in Chernobyl, imagine if something went red in Sandusky. Well, what you would have then is Pripyat. You'd have this beautiful amusement park just sitting there as a wasteland. And we're going to get to Pripyat in a minute in that whole area. Uh, moving on with our massive uh, Fukushima updates, uh, check this out. Uh, this is from neonettle.com. Don't think they've ever been on the show before. So, well, look at the board. Fukushima scientists' days of eating fish from the ocean are over. Now, I've been warning anybody that would listen about this. You can't just go to the store anymore and buy strawberries or buy grapes or without checking where it's from. Because if it's from California, or if you're eating fish, for instance, sushi, tuna, from the Pacific Ocean, you can never do that again after this disaster. And if you do, you're jeopardizing your health. Now, I don't give a damn about what they say uh, with uh, in regards to this food being safe or low level. What is, there is no safe dosage of radiation. Let me repeat that. There is no safe dosage of radiation. There isn't. And what we're doing is bringing this into our bodies. We are ingesting it. And when you ingest things that are supposed to be not so harmful, like um, tritium, which cannot be removed from water because it is radioactive hydrogen, it becomes a component of the water. When you bring that into your body, it does horrendous, terrible, terrible, unspeakable damage to your DNA, and uh, it can lead to your cells not dying properly, which will, of course, uh, we call cancer. Radiation from Fukushima power plant has been continually leaking since the meltdown at this catastrophic level. Scientists are claiming days of eating fish in the Pacific Ocean could be over. Scientists have claimed that TEPCO, the company who is in charge of monitoring the plant, has admitted that radiation has been leaking into the Pacific Ocean nonstop for the past six years. There are also claims that an estimated 300 to 450 tons of contaminated water being leaked from Fukushima plant is happening every day. And last month, Neon Nettle re reported that TEPCO confirmed its plans, its plans excuse me, to release radioactive material from Fukushima into the ocean. Uh, we, we've covered this here extensively. They, they like to say that the answer to pollution, radioactive pollution is dilution. Well, that's not true. Radioactivity will not dilute in water. It will incorporate itself into the food chain, and it will never leave. And storms will bring it back into the atmosphere, and it will rain all over. <laughs> there is no way to dilute this by, by putting it into the ocean. What you're doing is contaminating all of humanity when you do that. According to scientist Ken Busseler, for those of you who say that I don't give sources when I certainly do, who has examined the, the contaminated fish, the level of radiation may not be enough to poison humans, no. However, he claims uh, were immediately contradicted by the scientists who said that there was no such thing as safe levels of radiation in food products. The contaminated water is believed to contain traces of radioactive iodine, cesium, and strontium-89 and 90. Strontium-90 is a direct 
invitation for bone cancer. Okay? It can lead to other things too, such as blood cancer, of course, leukemia. Horrible. Horrible. It, it's toxic to all life. All life! It is toxic to all life. Despite efforts from the Japanese government to control the problem, the fish had still been affected by the sheer mass of the radiation spewing into the ocean. Many fish in the region have now tested positive for huge amounts of radiation, resulting in the closing of fishing industries. Woe to the fish gate uh, from the Bible. Many uh, new studies reveal that alarming levels of radiation in fish caught off the northeast coast of the United States and in Canada have been traced to the nuclear power plant. Um, I don't know how else to make it any clearer for everyone, friends. There is... A need for all of us, all of you hearing this, all of you sharing this, all of you watching this, to actively get involved in not only closing nuclear power plants, but preventing new ones from opening up. I just watched on RT how the the new in the eighties the nuclear industry was said to have been crippled because of cost overruns and not being able to say when anything was actually going to be finished. Well, that's the same thing that's dooming them now in the uh, in 2017. So that's good news. But we, we, we need to occupy these things. I don't hurt anyone, but we need to make absolute positive sure that these things, without harming anyone, do not open. Um, share this video. Let others know how important this is, okay? I've got three more to get to. I just want to give a quick shout out to the Seacrest Motel. I don't know how many of you are going to be doing something fun. Maybe you're going to be going to Cedar Point or something like that this weekend. This is Labor Day weekend coming up. If you're going to do so, then let me let you in on a little secret. The place you're going to want to stay at is the Seacrest Motel. And uh, you'll get a great rate just for listening to us. Guys, check this out. It's for everyone to enjoy here. Nineteen seventy four, friends. That's when it was built. Give them a call, guys. See Crest Motel. Let them know you listen to the show. And I promise you what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a great deal. Go out and see him, guys. That's the Seacrest Motel. You're going to get a great room, a great price, and let's face it, you're going to enjoy Cedar Point. Um, they're not open during Halloween weekend, so get there this weekend. Reactor revealed a National Geographic. Word of the day, Seacrest. Type in Seacrest in the comment line, and I'll send you something free. I do need your address to know where to send it. Otherwise, Christelle and I have no idea. So uh, give me your address at the correct views of hotmail.com. Maybe when you donate, you don't have to. Word of the day, Seacrest. A small robot is the first to show the underwater ruins of the world's worst nuclear power plant disaster. At least they're now calling it what it is. They're not trying to say that it's a, a Chernobyl part two because we know it's much worse. A robot sent to explore the submerged ruins of Japan's Fukushima nuclear power plant is offering a new look at the damage. From the country's worst nuclear disaster, the device nicknamed Little Sunfish found mounted clumps of material that could be fueled debris, and it was sent to locate uh, when they uh, did the updates on Friday. Now, I'm going to let this uh, go on the screen behind me so that all of you can get a good look at, I mean, just look at what they're dealing with here. Look at, the, I mean, going into this pipe, going into the, the, the into the, those little specks, those are radioactive isotopes damaging the actual recording process because the air itself is cooking due to the level of radioactivity that you're seeing here. Do you see those? Do you see all those? Those, all of these, are blemishes that are cooking the camera, that cooks the robot, and that cooks you. And it's spewing into the air, so I don't care where you're listening to this day. You're probably listening to it in Zimbabwe or something. It happens all the time. It's affecting you because of the nature of the jet stream and the nature of the planet. 
After an earthquake struck near Japan, we know that the meltdown happened. Uh, release of nearly 100,000 people lost their homes. I'm skipping the part we all know. Six years later, the homes remained deserted, but underwater robots could be the key to decontaminating the area and making it habitable again. Yeah, except for the fact that all of the robots to get anywhere near the area are cooked and can never be used again, and some of them we shut that off. Some of them are so unbelievably radioactive that they can't even be handled by the crew that sent a robot in when it comes back, at least not safely. According to the Japan Times, the new robot failed to find the fuel on its first day of operations on July 29th, but offered the first look inside Reactor 3 since it failed in 11, uh, 2011. Video shows scattered debris and the factory remains submerged 20 feet below water. Subsequent, subsequent exploration of the reactor Friday revealed melted debris that may contain radioactive fuel that's called corium. Previous attempts to find the melted fuel at 1 and 2 have not been successful. Uh, Japanese company Toshiba has been heavily involved in the Fukushima decontamination process. Once all the fuel is found, efforts to remove it uh, and actively contaminate the region are expected to begin uh, after the 2020 Olympics. For one thing, bringing the 2020 Olympics into this area is you might as well put a gun to their head and kill them. The, you're going to be bringing a lot of radioactivity into their bodies. And what you're going to have is 20, 30 years down the line, people are having all kinds of health trouble and not understanding why. But beyond that, which is what you're going to find from people that live there anyway, beyond that, it's going to take 35 to 40 years to decommission this plant. We don't even have the technology to decommission this plant. We have to hope we can create it. We can't do anything now but send robots in that can find the part of the debris before it melts down and is no longer useful anymore, which is what's happening to the DNA of every single person listening to this, depending on how much of anything from... California, Japan, or the Pacific Ocean that you take into your body. Friends, uh, I hate when Yahoo does that. This is uh, one of the last two stories I have. The Stray Dogs of Chernobyl. Um, the, it stands as a monument outside the new giant enclosure that covers the devastated reactor number four at Chernobyl. Um, an estimated 900 stray dogs who are contaminated live in the Chernobyl exclusion zone, many of them likely the descendants of dogs left behind following the mass evacuation of evidence after the uh, 86 nuclear disaster. Uh, volunteers, including veterinarians and radiation experts from around the world, are participating in an initiative called the Dogs of Chernobyl, launched by the nonprofit Clean Futures Fund. Participants capture the dogs, study their radiation exposure, vaccin uh, vaccinate them against parasites, and diseases, including rabies, tag the dogs and release them back into the exclusion zone. Some dogs are also being outfitted with special collars equipped with radiation sensors and GPS receivers in order to map uh, the levels across the zone. Now, of course, if they have contamination, as I go through the pictures here for you to see them, if they, oh, I hate Yahoo, if they go through um, a contaminated area, if they begin strolling and walking around, they will actually spread it. Okay, we know that pollen from bees have spread it. We know that any kind of uh, birds have been known, if they'll land in, you don't think about this, if they land in Fukushima and then they fly poisoned and then they land in your backyard and they die and you throw the bird away and then you mow the yard, guess what you just did? Breathe in nicely. Okay, you don't think about radiation spreading that way. But you should. Okay? You should, because your life could depend on it. And the lives of people that you love. And don't give me this crap. I'm not afraid to die. Bonehead, you want to be sick? It's not like you it's not like a bullet to the head where you're just gone. No. This is years of suffering. This is years of catching every kind of illness imaginable that comes down the line. It's years of heart disease. It's giving your kids cancer because it's in your DNA when you, when you have sex with uh, your significant other. This matters, people. And that brings us to the dumb D of the day. Oh, the dumb D of the day. Now, you would think when you build a nuclear power plant, you would make sure that things like bombs 
were not present, right? I mean, are we on the same page there? Let's at least make sure that there are not bombs present where we build the nuclear power plant. Well, this one I wrote for Teddy Stick, because that, that is where I write for them in the Conservative Daily Post. I sourced it from Fox, and this is what I wrote. After the 2011 earthquake began a nuclear meltdown at Fukushima in Japan, a massive tidal wave roared in and utterly demolished the plant in three, some say four, of the reactors. We have learned today from Fox News that radiation levels are higher now than they have been since the accident happened, and believe it or not, a bomb was found at the TEPCO GE site. Yes, GE, they bring good things to life. That is why you want to make sure you don't ever donate to them, because we can see exactly what they brought here. I'm letting this play on fact cam so you can see uh, the uh, actual video. A worker found, I wrote, what is thought to be a World War II era bomb while digging at a parking lot that is less than one mile away from the toxic plant. As the radioactivity explodes figuratively, this literal bomb is only minutes from the nuclear wasteland. And so, it's so much as a sneeze rocks one of the damaged reactors I wrote. The buildings in the next 40 years, that is what it will take to dismantle the plant once we create the technology to approach it, which we currently don't. The amount of radiation that will be released, should it topple, could easily be an extinction event for mankind. Okay, an extinction event. That is not an over-exaggeration, that is not hyperbole nor analogy, but actual fact. So needless to say, finding a bomb nearby was quite worrisome. The plant was closed off, the plant has closed off the area, excuse me, we are told, and it is said that the fine will not at all derail the work being done to try to fix this unresolvable problem. The place where the bomb was discovered was once a wartime airport and was firebombed by the United States during World War II, Fox also tells us. The last thing that Fukushima needs is a bomb going off anywhere near the area. Even if the device is the, does not rattle the buildings, any disturbance that spreads the radiation around, like an explosion, could increase the damage even beyond what is happening today. There is no way to really convey how bad this disaster is. Sadly, no matter what the Japanese do, this problem just finds more and more hurdles. Now we can add bomb removal to the list. Uh, sources, Fox News, and Financial Times, it appeared in Teddy Stick... And friends, that's your massive Fukushima update. Thank you so much for listening. And don't go away before you think, hey, I should donate to that guy. He just busted ass for me. Hey, listen, if you can, please do. It's thecorrectviews at hotmail.com through paypal.com. Uh, thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. Thank you. Hit share. Hit subscribe. Let other people know what's going on with this, friends. Good night. And God bless.